Hello Striders, welcome! This is the first match and it's between me to the right and my uh, uh, one of my friends uh, Sebastian to the left. You have seen him playing before in our live videos. So I have no clue what he's up to but uh, as long as it is involving creatures I think I will be fine. That's at least my uh, my initial uh, inclination here and uh, regardless on the result I will be cracking up a pack at the end of the video uh, I won't be talking that much it will be a, a pretty fast one uh, around a minute I think and um, yeah so here you can see my my opening hand I'm pretty pleased a um, couple of lands uh, flyer and uh, silent departure so I don't need that much to get going uh, I think that's fine yeah regarding the cracker pack uh, it was just a fun thing to do instead of me stripping boosters uh, thought it would be fun for you to see them so I won't be going over my picks and stuff in super great detail but I will at least tell you what I will what I would have planned to pick. So, so yeah, my first draw was Burning Vengeance, which is uh, <laughs> quite good. And my second draw was Murphy Cluder, so things are working out great so far. I could bounce Werber to push this curve back, but since my hand is stocked on lands and uh, um, I have stuff to do. It, it feels like I'd rather let him play a four or five drop, and then bounce it, and then play like Burning Vengeance, and the turn after that, flashback bounce it again, and uh, and get to work. So we'll see what horrible four drops he can uh, he can muster up. I'm not too worried, actually. Black and green seems to be the the main colors at least, um, and uh, that means elf based most likely, and that means um, um, that my burning vengeance will do a lot of work. So abundant growth here tells me that he probably has um, uh, splash cards obviously since he has a blue green dual as well but you wouldn't put duals and abundant growth in your deck for like one blue card with one symbol I don't think so he probably has something more expensive than that so it could be it could be anything but yeah so another mana dork that's fine stage is being set up for me to to do my stuff so yeah usually I'm looting at the last possible moment but here it feels like I already have lands to discard so I missed one I'm just interested to see what I'm going to draw so I can plan out further turns ahead if possible. So yeah, now Sebastian has access to 6 mana I think, but I will be able to pick off his mana dorks in, in a turn, which is pretty good actually. And I assume something big will come out here, and I can just bounce that and um, maybe play something else. And then, if you replace it, I can bounce it again, kill a mana dork, uh, and after that, add my flyer to the board and start uh, munching in. So, the mighty swing for one doesn't bother me at all. It will be hard for Sebastian to get through here. So 5 mana and it's a Sarah Spider. 
I know it's called Sentinel Spider, but it's basically Sir Angel. So I'm gonna loot again. Still, I want to see what options I have. Do I get like a tapped land or um, like would a fireball change my plans? I don't know. So yeah, I found a tapped land, which is good because. I can use that to gain a life and still be in, in good shape. So not the best turn mana wise, but what can you do? There wasn't that many cheap uh, flashback costs. Most of them were 5, which is not unreasonable, but that means you can do one thing a turn, unless you're playing like Faithless you're doing a Dream Twist or um, stuff like that. Una's Grace would also work. So here it taps a lot of mana. So I'm like, geez, what's this? Like, I know it's not Crystal Brand, but something like that. It's a Roar of the Worm, and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you go go right ahead. That doesn't that doesn't bother me at all. Because I already have Silent Departure ready, so yeah. Had he played like Sentinel Spider first, I would still have bounced that, and he doesn't know that I don't have. He he can't know if I have more bounce, but I do actually. So uh, that that's actually pretty pretty good. Because the good thing with to tokens is that they don't uh, stick around very long if you bounce them. I also drew <coughs> man war here, which is good because now I can uh, now I can bounce the second token with no fear. And <coughs> my draw for the turn was the Drake, so that's epic. Now I can get <coughs> my offense going. Killing of Werebear, even though. Sebastian doesn't have close to the threshold, but yeah, th this is a turn, right? Killing a token, <coughs> killing a mana dork, adding a two-three flyer, <coughs> and filtering the deck. I'm not too unhappy with that. What what is a bit worrying is that if he can flood the board this turn doing something good. I'm not set up yet to machine gun them down with uh, Burning Venience, so if you can play multiple medium sized things uh, instead of one big thing that could actually be a problem and as you might have seen there he has a little and a hunt master in, in his hand and that is a good way to do that but that also requires him to have something else so we'll see what he does here I think there is yeah I, there, there's probably good options or good reasons to do a lot of things he likes to go with the roar which I'm not super stoked about from his side because had he played a 5 drop this turn he would have been able to uh, <coughs> play 2 4 drops next turn if he if he uh, draws a land so it would be a better use of mana he doesn't know that I have a mana war though but yeah mana war is strong So yeah, Murphy Clure is doing great work here, filtering through my lands and expensive black spells that I don't need. So he didn't draw land, he drew a werebear which um, which basically puts him in the same spot had he played No, no, then he can actually play Sentinel Spider and uh, wherever if he wants to so 
fly mana. But I have my counter spell ready. <coughs> <coughs> Which is a pretty good spell, I have to say. So this is Rex uh, uh, Sebastian's defenses this turn. And that's one of the interesting things with the deck I'm playing that still still stands true from the Instra days. And that is you're not doing that much when it comes to attacking, but all of a sudden your opponent is at a pretty low life total. And no one knows how that happened. It's like you you, sh you ship in a damage or two with a flyer you might hit him with a burning vengeance trigger because you don't have a better target for the time being and all of a sudden they are at like 10 and you can start sending in merfolk looters or your whatever you have, yeah like a turtle and uh, then they are at like a one turn clock all of a sudden and that's not the, the spot you want to be in so here I'm burning off um, my silent departure and the reason is that I want to be able to flashback it next turn. I could have done it next turn, uh, leaving him with the werebear in play, but uh, uh, I wanted to be like a bit up front with it, see what he was going to do. And maybe if he has something expensive here, I can bounce that and kill his other mana dork, and then he doesn't have a board at all. Bouncing mana dorks are generally pretty good. So now, he plays Urborg Uprising, which just happens to be one of the best cards ever, uh, in my opinion, but I'm happy to see that because that I didn't add anything to the board at all. So if he plays a werebear, sure I can trade for for both of his creatures with my mana war if he wants to do that. I still chip in for five, which is good. And I can save my silent departure for later. And he doesn't have that much mana. Uh, only like seven or whatever from his lands and that's okay. I can handle that. So I'm fine trading here if that's what he wants to do because it's unlikely that he can play more than one spell a turn if that's the case. But he doesn't. He takes the damage which makes him dead next turn. Because I have 5 pow power in the air and already a burning vengeance trigger ready to go. So I could have flashed back Silent Departure here, but to me it feels more like it's my game to lose now, so let's save it, let's see if we can get some more information. Um, yeah, but it turns out that no, that's not going to happen, so on to game two. So on the draw, I got like the best hand ever, it's like two lands, <coughs> a removal spell, Merfolk Cluder. yeah, <coughs> so I'm like, Janowar Elf, come on, it's a no elf, alright, and I decide I'm gonna start with the island, just to keep his mind off that I actually have red spells in my deck. And then he goes ahead and plays this stupid elf that grows, and I'm like, I don't want to kill that, <coughs> but I'm way, way too far off of uh, of uh, killing it with like a burning vengeance, so I have to kill it here. I'd much rather play Merfolk Looter or something, but I didn't want to take the risk because an untapped land and two elves, which is more than possible. Uh, makes it out of range, so I have to kill it here. And now Sebastian is gonna reveal his secret weapon, which is quite sad for me, but 
Good for him. He has a Deathrite Shaman, and I'm like, ugh. It doesn't bother me that much, honestly, because it can only eat one card a turn, and um, uh, I'm quite confident that I can fill more than one card a turn. The bad thing is that it can hit my key cards, like uh, Firebolt. So if I had had another fireball here, I would be happy, but I didn't. So my plan now is find burning vengeance and do my shenanigans. Uh, I got my looter in play, so that's good. If he wants to spend a turn killing it, it's fine. I have desperate ravings for days. That can help me improve my hand. So here is a little on a hunt master, and I kind of assume that will be would be part of the team in one way or another. I saw a few of them late in the draft portion, so it's quite possible. So I'm mainly looking for bands here. Lance and Burning Venus, as always. So in Discord one desperate ravings, the the pause there was not to think if that was the right card to discard. The pause were for um, should I use it uh, from the graveyard or should I use the one from my hand? Uh, and I think there it's it's good options for both. If I use the one from my graveyard, I have one less flashback spell. But I have uh, uh, more chances of drawing a land and actually keeping it. Yes, that's three desperate ravings in my graveyard. Mog War Marshal turns up here. It's not the most impactful of plays, but it will um, stem the bleeding a little bit. This turn it will be like a free block because I'm not gonna pay the echo and wherever I can no longer attack <coughs> if it would uh, be part of a plan in one way or another. <coughs> and then I can jump block a few turns if I want to. Right now I'm at 20 so I'm not too worried but yeah. And I know what Sebastian is going to do this turn. He only has access to 3 mana because he needs to remove my Firebolt and he needs to do it in my upkeep. That's the latest point. He can do that. Which is quite interesting, at least the attack is, because he could have waited, see if I paid for Echo, and if I did, he did, he did not have to eat uh, my Firebolt this turn. Then he could have eaten... Uh, desperate dreams. This one, on the other hand, makes me. <laughs> I'm a bit unhappy because this is the pump elf. And the pump elf um, makes my first removal spell useless. And I can't target itself with the first one because it will be too big for my second one. So even if I draw a fireball here, I cannot kill it. Or rather, I have to draw Firewall this turn. Then, uh, then I'm fine. But if I let him untap, that will be a huge problem. So I drew Burning Vengeance, I think, which is not Firewall, but it's still pretty pretty good. And I drew a tap land, which is fine. So his board is building out <coughs> fast and gonna overwhelm me within a few turns um, so um, I need to craft a plan here on what to do I missed sorting out the cards uh, the, uh, scheduling up my turns and it turns out that big fires are not a part of my future And here I'm doing a risky play. I'm keeping Counterspell plus um, Desperate Ravings up. But I, I later re regretted that because 
I'm I'm not gonna gamble on Desperate Ravings when I have Burning Vengeance in hand. If I don't have it in hand, that's fine. It's uh, such a low chance of uh, discarding it if I happen to draw it. But now it's actually a pretty big, big risk. So, so abundant growth comes out. So that's fine. I failed to kill his pump elf, which will make the, my life a lot harder. My plan is basically to bounce it, forcing him to uh, pump something, and then I can kill whatever. But at the same time, he can use Deathrite Shaman in response to eat something, and then if I want to save my spell, I am. Uh, uh, I will not get to to kill something, but yeah. So I'm gonna count to spell that elf. <coughs> not because I can't kill it otherwise, because I can, but because it will be too much for me. My looter will die, and uh, my defenses will wither down f really fast. So, and I want to use mana if possible. So here it looks like we will see an attack for 3. But at the same time he doesn't want to block with anything probably but... Yeah so Hunkmaster comes in and it's... I mean it's... Uh, I guess it's a risk. Since I can block. But yeah. So I wasted a couple of mana there which is unfortunate. And now I'm looking for an untapped land, I think. And Man of War. Then that works too. So I'm gonna keep feeding my graveyard flashback cards so that I can outpace the, the Death Rite Shaman, which I'm doing a pretty good work uh, of doing so far, I'd say. So I'm gaining a life here, which is fine gonna play Drake because it's a freebie and I'm gonna add burning vengeance and now I've set up the the pieces I need this time I could have played Drake burning vengeance desperate ravings but I didn't draw an untapped plan so I had to take this line instead uh, which more or less burns two, two mana for me But I still think it will be fine because I will wipe the board in. Next turn will be my final setup turn. I will bounce the the pumper, uh, fizzle the death right shaman, and uh, the turn after that, um, if he adds the pump elf again, it will die. And if he doesn't, I will just gun down everything. So Sebastian has to conjure up something here. It's not impossible that an attack would be in order. Because I I mean he could probably attack with both tokens. Hunt Master. Well he decides to not attack with anything, but I think that could have been a good attack because Yeah, we would trade a token for a token and then he would get in like a bunch of damage but he he tries to use his pumps pump elf like uh, life insurance so here he does I, I guess it's the correct play to try to eat a uh, desperate things I could just let this happen B bounce his pump elf and then play a desperate ravings killing death right shaman but what I'm worried about is that I don't have that many flashback spells left and I want to use as many desperate ravings as I can here I should obviously point two damage at him because there's no reason to target any creature uh, since they will be saved by the pump elf
So yeah, I get to use my Desperate Ravens, which is nice because my hand is garbage. But I will lose the flashback spell next turn. And you hit tip analysis, which is fine. I mean, basically, um, he has to 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 eat that, which is also good because then I know what I have. Uh, as far as options go next turn. So I'm gonna discard Silent Departure as well and this is just... I think it's fine. I'm getting more value out of it. Uh, and my plan is to go 5 mana flashback spell, 3 mana flashback spell next turn and just... because I need to kill Deathrite Shaman. That's uh, annoying. But at the same time I need to kill the pump elf. It cannot be running around anymore. So I'm mainly setting up and as I said that was my last turn setting up. Now I will be ready to, to roll here I think. I could see many different <laughs> ways of playing out this turn. Uh, using Death Rite Shaman is obviously something you're gonna do, but what are you going to eat? <laughs> I mean, um, Deep Analysis is a good one to, to eat, but Silent Departure is also really good and it's obviously part of my plan. Um, deep Analysis would make it so that an untapped land would make it so I could flashback three things, but doing three two damage things instead of two plus an unsummon is quite it's quite similar and yeah I think an attack last turn for like five or six damage then I would maybe lose But now I'm feeling quite confident because this, this was the turn something needed to happen. After this I will just... I, I will probably take over the game now. And I do have a decent board so as long as I can clear the way here it will be a pretty fast game. So I drew a land, I don't really want to play lands, but that's that's another interesting thing with this deck. You want to reach 5 mana because that's when you can flashback stuff. And then 6 mana because then you can play and flashback a 1 mana spell. And the next stop of mana you want to reach is 10. <laughs> so lands 7, 8 and 9 are usually not that good. So I'm gonna bounce, Huntmaster, kill the Pump Elf. That's the worst one for me, so I, I need to do that. Then I'm gonna flash back Desperate Ravings, trigger and kill Deathrite Shaman. Even getting to draw a card in the process. And he hits Factor of Fiction. No! It's too bad. So his key elves are gone now and I I could have attacked on the ground, but I didn't want to trade my board for his board when I have Burning Vengeance in play. That just feels stupid. Trading away like one goblin would have been fine. But as it stands now, he could have double blocked Man of War and uh, single blocked other things, leaving me with Drake and him with nothing, but it still feels somewhat sad. So I'm expecting a reload here from Sebastian in one way or another. Something that just builds up the board again. And now I have like Desperate Ravings as my last card in the graveyard I think. But I do have Silent Departure in my hand which is good. And I'm looking at 8 mana, 9 if I drop a land. So 
it's six mana to to play and flashback silent departure and then if I have an untap plan I can flashback the last desperate driving so I can do basically the same thing I did last turn again so here's that Urburg uprising again in theory that would be that should be good against me but it really it really isn't here the only card that I was somewhat worried about was the elf that gets counters but he didn't pick it up um, and it, not for this turn either but next turn let's say he plays uh, Huntmaster plus that one plus like two cheap elves it, it grows out of range and I need to to work harder to to kill it. I can bounce it but then Huntmaster gets to run around so that's what I was afraid of. But just Urburg Uprising this turn that's just fine. I don't get to hit the high value targets but I get to clean up the board and put some real pressure on, uh, on my opponent here. So I think it's fine to to loot here because uh, if I don't find another land, well, <coughs> that's life. So I think I drew. <coughs> I think I drew a five bolt. Maybe not. I'm gonna use silent departure, and then I'm gonna flashback it and um, clean up the the board a bit. So I'm bouncing another token and uh, burning vengeance the uh, werebear. So this leaves Sebastian with one lonely token. It can trade for one of my goblins if it wants to, that's fine. But yeah, in two turns, Sebastian's grand board has been reduced to nothing but ashes, I guess. And he has lost, I think, nine life in the process. No seven life in the process and I still have plenty of things to do he has a lot of cards though but I know that most of them are small elves so now Handmaster plus two or three small elves will regain him his board but I can get him down as just as fast again so that's kinda epic I'm just hand showing how how my machine gunnery works. So Huntmaster comes down, that's fine. I, I don't have more counter spells, so he doesn't know that. I guess this is the turn you should play like Deathrite Shaman and uh, the minus one, minus one thing. That will stop my attacks and force me to do more stuff. Yeah, that one, and I think you should play the Threat Shaman here, just to give me a high priority target. Yeah, I think that's correct, because against Burning Vengeance, your plan is not to to uh, manage your resources like it is against a normal spot removal control deck. Like here it is to overwhelm my capacity on burning vengeance but at this point of the game that's quite quite hard to do so I have, an, I have another silent departure in hand which would be pretty good but it's better off in the graveyard So yeah, I have a firebolt, and that one will kill Deathrite Shaman because I don't care for Deathrite Shaman. And then I'm gonna flashback it to kill Huntmaster because that's the one that's um, doing all the shenanigans and desperate trainings to get rid of Burning uh, the minus one minus one guy. So here again, I could not attack, or I can just attack with my flyer. Or I can send with everything, and I'm fine sending here because, at least as far as I'm concerned, his resources are 
all close to to empty. So trading off my man of war does lessen my board presence a bit, but I don't think that will matter. Now he has like two cards and I know that one of them is a one two that I can kill instantly. Which is quite good. So I'm feeling quite confident that I can take this game uh, unless something happens here. It has to be something really good. So he has Sentinel Spider again. That doesn't match up against Silent Departure at all, which I'm happy with. And I'm still... I, I don't think I've got to see his blue splash. That's the only thing that worries me, because that could be something something devastating. And now when he taps like this, I'm like, okay. And he has a control magic, which he actually under-tapped for as well, I think. But never mind, he steals my drake. And I'm like, okay. That's fine. And there's abundant growth, and I'm like, well, if this is the best you can do, I'm still pretty fine with that. It's not game changing or anything. The fact is that I can I can just bounce my Drake, replay it for free since I have so much mana, and continue doing other stuff. So it's gonna pass the turn here, very interestingly enough. And I do believe I found a mana war, if I recall correctly. And this is nice. Because my hand is set. I wanted to play Manor first just to 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 check what was going to happen. But my hand is ready and my graveyard is good enough that I feel like I can probably send in my Morphal Clure. It does have power, which is well, not something you see every day. So I'm just going to play it and untap again. And then I'm going to ship him for two. This puts him to seven and I have a six power in play which makes it um, lethal uh, with any flashback spell. And my Wee Dragonaut will hit the board and hit the Ben. <laughs> Great. I could have not attacked with Ludra this turn and attacked next turn, but I assume he can do something. But yeah, I'm feeling that this game is almost over. Now he draws, draws Sylvan Library and he says like, now I got my good card. I'm like, oh it's Sylvan Library? Oh it is. Well, that does, that's not going to do anything. <laughs> I think he even said that I'd rather have a goblin token than Sylvan Library at, at this point because he's so close to dead. So here comes Sentinel Spider and I'm like, sure, you're dead. And I actually know this because you know math. So I'm going to flash back um, my Silent Departure, burn him for 2 down to 5 and crash in with my team. So there you have it, 2-0 to me and on to the fast cracker pack. So I'm just gonna open the, uh, the pack and flip through the cards really fast but Innocent Blood, good, good start, it's a good card. Not as great in Limited though, 
Killer Marauder is really good. I love Shelter. Thornwheel Archer is not super good. Touched, you know. I would like sending is my pick this far uh, because it's uh, unconditional. Honor Guard might be better actually, it's really good. <laughs> uh, Wall of Omens, pretty good too, but still, I blade sending. Prodigal Sorcerer would have been my pick out of this pack uh, for limited purposes because I, I like it. Crimson Sin is highly overrated in draft and rare will be a sting scourger. So, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, it really helps us out. You can find us on Twitter at MagicGathStrat, Facebook slash MagicGatheringStrat, or on the web MagicGatheringStrat.com. There you can find articles and free prize-supported leagues. This is all brought to you by our Patreons and CardHoarder.com. If you enjoy this content, please consider supporting us at Patreon.com slash MagicGatheringStrat.